to component three A and B. This is lesson 13. This is on payment methods. When you see the money, because this is all about payment, then that's where your help will be. So where are we going with this lesson? We're looking at knowing different payment methods. Then we're going to build up to be able to describe the difference between direct debit and debit cards, amongst others. But these two are the ones that we need to be key. So we're also going to look at card and cash payments and credit cards. And then we're going to be able to evaluate the payment methods and discuss the impact of them on customers and businesses. So the key vocabulary, direct debit, debit cards, we've got that. Payment technologies, we've got credit cards as well. So the success criteria for the lesson is to be able to uh, know five different payment methods, being able to explain the difference between credit and debit cards, direct debit and new payment technologies, and obviously the higher level skills we're looking at the impact on customers and businesses of these payment methods that are used. The careers at the bottom are specific to payment methods. We've got ATM, which is automated teller machine, which is the hole in the wall, basically, an ATM coordinator, a card operation specialist and a commercial loan manager, all things which are related to payment methods. So starter task then, in case I haven't mentioned it, this lesson's about payment methods. Let's just do a little starter task to check what you know already. So first of all, make a list of different ways of making a payment. Think about when you go into a shop or a supermarket start there first if you can go as far as between businesses like the kind of payments tesco's might make to their farmers then that would be good organize them into a table and then put a tick in the table as to which one you think are traditional ways of paying and which ones are using new technology and here's a little help as to how you can lay out the table it just needs to look like this it's a list and you're ticking so here's a starter for you and that's all you need to do. I reckon you could get up to about five or six different ways of payment. So what are the different payment methods? Did you come up with some of these? Did you come up with debit cards, the ones that you can pay over it very much in shops where you bip your card and it takes from your account straight away? Credit cards, the ones where you bip your card and you get the bill at the end of the month. Obviously there's cash. Payment technologies, things like Apple Pay, Android Pay, and the various others that there are. And then direct debit. You may or may not know about that one. That's where you can set it up, particularly for your regular bill payments. And uh, you can say, um, if you're Tesco's, yes, please, can I make sure every month the money going to pay for the electricity of the store is taken from the account, and it does automatically. And that's an instruction to the bank. So those are all the payment methods. Well, so far, those are the payments methods we're going to discuss in the lesson. And as we go through, we're going to look at what these mean in terms of an impact on customers and an impact on enterprises, businesses. Now, the impact is going to be what happens when they use them, what happens when they don't use them. How does it benefit the companies as well? So the first payment method, we're going to look at cash, money in the form of notes and coins. So the first question, nice and easy, how many different types of cash do we have in the UK? Literally write down the notes and cash that we use. I know that sounds a bit uh, of a, a weird question, but let, do you know what? There's no harm in starting off easy. Your next task is to read the table. Make sure you go through the five bullet points on advantages and five on the disadvantages. Talking about the consumers and enterprises are confident using it widely accepted by most enterprises. Small denominations are available, so can pay for small items, e.g. a drink at 30 pence. Consumers and enterprises know how much they have and can only spend that amount. Therefore, it's easy to control expenditure and it can be used to save. Disadvantages, there's risk of loss or theft, both from customers and enterprises, literally it can be stolen. Can only be used for physical transactions because you're physically handing over the money. Generally inappropriate for large items of expenditure, like buying a car or buying a piece of land or buying a uh, factory for a business because the sums are just too large. Banks can charge enterprises for making cash deposits. Yes, that's how banks make money as well. And between a customer and an enterprise, then you also need to have change. And in our current climate, there's quite a few places who are not accepting cash 
because of pandemic and because of hand touching as well. So there's there's another element to cash that we didn't previously have. So question two and three in red on the left. Should we get rid of 1p and 2p coins and what impact might, might this have for small and local businesses? So what we've got to think about is getting rid of the 1p and 2p. Well, think about the way um, especially retailers operate with selling products for 2 99 9 99 Why is it that they sell it for 9 99 Because it does feel quite a bit cheaper than £10. It's quite psychological and that's genuine. So if we get rid of that, there, there's an implication between a relationship between customers and businesses, retailers, and how does that work? And if you get rid of that in between traders, say the Tesco's and the farmers, how does that work? How does that work when it comes to buying uh, petrol, for example? So those are the things to consider. There could be some negatives. Obviously, that's what I'm suggesting at the moment. But are there any positives? Because we're looking at do you need to have that penny between people and on how many times does that extra penny make a massive difference? The next payment method, credit card. This allows the customer to make purchases on credit, i.e. buy now but repay later. Repayments are made following the issue of a statement with a minimum amount to be paid each month. The credit card bill at the end of the month and it tells you you can pay in full or you pay a percentage back and you keep paying it, as the last bullet point says, until the whole amount can be paid off in one go. Read the introduction, as we've just done, and then the table, which is the second we're going to come to, and then you have one red question at the bottom. The advantages of using a credit card. It allows the customer to delay payment and spread it out over a period of time. It's widely accepted, but it's not 100% accepted because that's different types of credit cards. It can be used online or in a store, and it can encourage a customer to make purchases when they don't have cash, hence increasing sales for enterprises. Disadvantages of using a credit card. Interest is charged on the outstanding balance, making it a more expensive option for the customer. And interest on credit cards is usually quite high as well. It can encourage overspending because you can purchase a product when you don't have the cash. And enterprises normally have to pay the bank a fee for each transaction taken on a credit card. Here's your red task. What are the negative points to using a credit card? Now, you're not expected to copy and paste the words in the table. Neither are you expected to stare at the screen and copy them down. What you're expected to do is to write a heading, negative points of a credit card, and you're expected to summarise in full sentences what these negative points are. Because when it comes to an extended question in the exam, these are the practice questions and practice answers that you're going to need to use later on. Our next payment method is debit card. This allows the customer to make purchases by card with the money being taken directly from a bank account. And it can also be used to withdraw cash. So the tasks for this payment method. Read the introduction, which we've just covered, and then the table about advantages and disadvantages. Then click on the video link at the bottom before you answer the red task. Advantages of a debit card. Firstly, it's a secure method of payment, or it's considered a secure method, as you need to know a PIN number to use it. It's widely accepted both online and in stores, and you can withdraw cash from various places, an ATM, an automated teller machine, a hole in the wall, or at a cash desk in a store, which is called cashback. Disadvantage of, of using a debit card. You need to monitor the spending and bank balance, as if a customer overspends, this can be costly because lots of them where you can bip and then just put, make your purchase, then it will take time to process all these debits coming out of your bank and then they may, all, they may all stock up and you might find that you've overspent. The contactless uh, availability across stores and businesses has increased massively, both online and uh, physically. So where you are in directly in front of the enterprise and you can use their card machine and you bip the card machine, the, um, so the amount of places that now accepts it does also increase the, the risk of fraud as well. So here's the video icon. You need to click on this to watch the video. 
if you're watching this as a uh, on YouTube then the video link is written down below I suggest you use the final part of the URL contactless customers urge to check before they tap if you have a search for that and the fact it's on the BBC so you need to watch that and then you can answer the red question are contactless cards a good idea so here again you're having a practice at your extended question so you need to talk about firstly what contactless cards are so you're explaining then you talk about the good points and then you connect that using those high value connectives like on the other hand however although and you and you connect it to the bad points do you put forward a both sides of the argument and a conclusion all of that should give you enough grounds for a six point short essay Right, our next payment method is direct debit. These give permission to the bank to make regular payments to a third party upon the third party requesting. Often used for paying bills like electricity or car tax, so electricity that could be at home that you set up a direct debit that you want the local uh, electricity provider or the local, um, say, Sky to debit your account to pay for your monthly um, bills. So you're giving the bank permission to pay Sky, pay electricity from your bank account to the third party. And the third party basically means someone outside of the business or you, and that's the provider, electricity or Sky. And it's often used by customers as well as businesses. So hopefully that explanation gives you an idea that it's regularly used at home and it's regularly used by businesses. So your instructions is to read the introduction, which we've just covered, and the table, the advantages and disadvantages, and then you're in a position to complete the two red questions. Advantages of using direct debit. It ensures your regular payments are not missed, ensures the correct amount is paid as the amount can vary, and it appears on bank statements as a record. Disadvantages of using direct debit. The amount taken will vary, making budgeting difficult need to be reset up if bank details change, which may mean payments are missed if you forget to do this. It's taken automatically whether the money is there or not and may mean bank charges if the account goes overdrawn. And another one, which often people don't see when they sign up for a direct debit, you actually give the third party permission to debit the money from your account within five days of the date you agreed. So that means anything up to five days before and anything up to five days afterwards. Now think about what that does to cash flow. So here's the red questions. Number one, is the business really managing their expenses if it's paid automatically? And to explain how this could be a problem. So think about what's been put in the tables. Ensures regular payments are not missed. So you set it up, boom, it goes out, it goes out, it goes out. The correct amount is paid because the third party that the provider is saying you've got to pay this amount. It appears on your bank statement. OK, fine. It appears on your bank statement. So you can see it. But you see your bank statements at the end of each month. If we now look at the disadvantages, how can you budget when these amounts are going out regularly without your involvement because you set up you set it up for it to pay automatically? So if, for instance, one month you've had to use more fuel because of a particular order or for want of argument, it's been a, a weather, you've had a snap cold period, so you've had to heat your business more, then your expenses have gone up and then you won't see the cost of that go in until the bank statements come in. So you've paid for it. You Are you genuinely managing it if it comes in after you've paid it? And... The other point, which was I mentioned to you about you do sign up for a date, but the agreement on that you sign on a direct debit, because it is a contract that you sign, actually says the provider can take up to five days before and five days afterwards. So where you're managing your money and you're saying you need it to come out on the uh, 30th of a month, you could also be agreeing to it to come out on the 25th of the month or fifth of the next month, which means you've got to tie this in with when you get payments from your suppliers or your customers as well. So that can also impact on your um, cash flow. So all of these things you need to think about and you need to put into an extended sentence as your response to the red question. Our last payment method is payment technologies. 
This is the ability to make payments using up-to-date innovations, payments such as smartphones, apps, smartwatches and many more. So your task then is to read the introduction which we've just covered, complete the green list over on the left and then you click the links to watch. There's three clips that I need you to watch and once you've done that then you need to complete the purple table in the middle or you complete the purple table and then you are then ready to move on to the two red questions which are the, the the final learning point is the impact on customers and the impact on enterprises so we've covered this is basically the summary of the payment methods we're looking at what's happened to customers where in terms of what technology they're using and what's happened to enterprises now i know we've looked at the the migration from cash to card but think about also the impact on customer service and customer relationships, as well as things like fraud and convenience. So there's a few tips for you. So let's go over that again. You've, we've done the introduction. You've got a green list on the side where you're looking at more payment technologies to add to the list. Then you are going to complete the disadvantages and advantages table. And then the links, a little bit of video watching again. And if you're watching at this as a YouTube, then um, obviously the links won't work. So the names of the clips are underneath. Uh, remember to use the titles at the end, the surviving in a cashless world and BBC and, they've got, and use that as your search criteria. And that should help you find it. And only then take on the red questions once, you, once you've watched those three clips. Don't forget it's the green list next where you're listing the payment technologies. Then it's the purple table. So this is a complete switch around. This is where you are looking at the advantages and disadvantages of each of the payment technologies you have put in your green list. And yes, bullet points are fine to write in the table. Click me, the blue video link. Click me first, the surviving in a cashless world in order to watch. Click me next, the purple clip button, and this is where you're watching a video about meeting Smudge, the world's first contactless dog. And the last one, pick me, the green button, which is a clip about uh, Android Pay expanding to the UK. Hopefully you followed the order on the slides, so the order of activity, so you've built up some knowledge, and now you're ready for the red questions, the impact on customers, and the impact on enterprises. Now, a big clue was given to you on the area to investigate uh, in the introduction, actually right at the beginning of this particular part of the lesson. Well, you'll be pleased, maybe relieved to hear that that's it for A and B. Um, and this time we're gonna end with five minutes of quick fire, but on your neighbor, to so test your neighbor and time your neighbor to see how fast the two of you can answer these five questions. Well, that's it, folks. A sad moment. We have completed aim B, and in the order we've done it, we've actually completed aim A and aim C as well. Aim A being promotion, aim C being cash flow, break even, and sources of finance. And that's it for component three. You've done it. We now need to practice for the exam.